an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. This is part 13, the final part. Completing the new crankshaft, fitting it to the engine and testing it. The gland nut on the cylinder was of soft solid construction and non-functional. This 1896 engine is now rebuilt as far as I want to take it. And after reassembly it now runs very well as you will see. The first thing to look at is the crankshaft in the lathe. Is it going to run true? It's held together with Loctite 603. And it was built up in the lathe, which is not the way I would normally do it. I would fit the main crankshaft all the way through and cut it out of the crankweb area. The idea of doing it this way is it's simpler, and using Loctite 603 instead of silver solder means it's also quicker. When I test run the crankshaft in the lathe as shown, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than the rest of the components on this engine, so it should be fine. All of the parts look very shiny and new, and I need to make them look a bit older than this. The first thing to do is to use some scotch Bright and a needle file to distress the parts. I don't want to damage this assembly, I just want to make it look a bit older than it really is. A flat needle file is a very useful tool, and it's great for this sort of thing. The black residue that you can see coming off the file is some cast iron because the last time I used this file was to clean up a cast iron flywheel. I'm trying to make the crankweb look slightly uneven and a combination of scotch bright and a bit of a chunk that I dug out of it on purpose starts to give the impression of age. I was going to make a separate episode about repatination but it's such a simple job I really didn't think it was worth it. So, what's the secret? The secret is simple. Salt and vinegar. Not too much salt though because that will crystallise out. But if you mix salt and vinegar and apply it to the gunmetal parts, after a while they won't look quite so new. This also works on brass. Probably works on steel as well, but I really don't want the steel to be rusty. A while ago I worked on a very small traction engine. A little steam toy and the chimney had become damaged, so I had to remachine it, and it looked incredibly wrong, being very shiny, but the salt and vinegar treatment gave exactly the same patina that was there in the first place. This is the last episode, and it's about getting the engine to run. I'm not going to sit here with a paintbrush soaked in salt and vinegar, painting all the parts. This engine belongs to my friend James Evans. It was given to him a while ago. When he comes down from Darlington to collect it, we'll probably give it another run, and by then you will see the patina effect. Just to test things, with the bearing slack as you can see, the bearing top caps are wobbling about, I'm spinning the crankshaft in the bearings, and it seems to be okay. So I put the engine together and ran it on compressed air. I left the bearings quite slack for the first few runs. With some apprehension I connected the airline, and off we go. The bearings are all still quite loose, so this is very encouraging. Time now to have a look at the problem with the gland on the piston rod. I carefully slackened off the bolts and removed one from the crosshead guides so I could swing them out of the way, but as soon as I put a spanner on the nut it came off because it's not a real nut. This was a bit of a surprise, possibly in a signal box in 1896 Maybe the builder didn't have the equipment or the know-how to make a piston rod gland nut, who knows? At first I thought it was just the end of the gland nut that had sheared, but these are the smaller of the two pairs of pliers that I tried to use to undo it. In the end I refitted the nut with a bit of Loctite 603, and then with a couple of spanners back to back I rotated the crankshaft and the connecting rod pushed the part back into place. It's not quite right yet, it's running, but not as good as it could be. I'm just checking the colour of the oil coming out of the exhaust, and the good news is, it's not black. Well, it wouldn't be really after so many years. 
Generally speaking, oil is black when it's running in, but once it's running, it retains its colour. Here I'm making some adjustments to the position of the eccentric sheave, and I get the timing as near as possible. The new crankshaft is very stable, and it doesn't need the flywheel hard up against the bearing block, so here I'm slacking off the bolt to move it outwards slightly. Normally I would set the valve timing by ear, but it's difficult with this engine with all the blowback from the piston rod gland. I tightened all the adjustable bearings after the initial run, and now the engine is sounding much better. It runs very smoothly for such an old engine. Now it's time for the warp speed destruction test and it passed with fine colours. I would like to thank Mr Howard Peach for sending me the flywheel. You were right, Howard, it's exactly the right size. And with a bit of luck, providing that nobody destroys the planet, it should still be able to run in 2096. That would make it 200 years old. I'm quite impressed. And who knows, young James Evans may still be alive. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.